Yeah, hello everyone. Um, this is a kind of follow up of the old tutorial um, where we built a plexus effect in Cinema. And now with the new release of Cinema um, 2023.2, there is a big update in notes and there is one specific note that makes our process to build a plexus set up much easier and the uh, setup uh, is much faster. So let me first show you time of a comparison of the old one in terms of performance and then uh, we build one from scratch. Okay, let's go. Okay, here you see a matrix object with 10 by 10 by 10, uh, so 1000 matrices and here you see the both capsules, the, the old one um, from the old uh, tutorial. And here is the new setup. And uh, let's make first a performance test. So activate the old first. Um, the matrix object is already in there. So activate it and we see here the splines. Um, let me hide this. Uh, here you see the frames per second. So when you play it uh, with thousand matrices, uh, we see it's super slow. It's around 1.6 um, frames per second. Um, I actually have a, have a very good computer. So that's not super efficient for um, huge setups. And now let's compare this with the new one. So I deactivate the old and activate the new one. So it's pretty much the same. And now let's play this. Uh, we see we have here uh, more than real time. We have around 40 frames per second. So that's a huge difference to the old one. So uh, in terms of performance. So uh, let me show you how to build this. First off, I don't explain every node and every step uh, in depth here. So I highly recommend to um, watch the old uh, the old tutorial first, there I go more in depth and uh, also did some explanations there. So maybe go and watch this first. So, okay, let's start with the setup. I already built a matrix object here, the, the same as uh, in the previous part. And then let's go to the as a browser, go to as a construction and we want to build a spline capsule. So drag it to here and then open with a double click. And now we are inside the spline capsule. So first, of course, we place our matrix object here. And here, all we need from the matrix object is the point array. So these are the points, the positions here in space. <clears throat> so, and the next thing we need is actually the new node. You will find this on the geometry modifier. It's called closest points. Place this here. And uh, here you see you have two inputs. You have the geometry and a query position. So the query position is the position that searches over the rest of the geometry and searches the closest points. So here the settings, you see the uh, maximum distance to search and the maximum neighbors to search. So you can feed in a geometry object, uh, but you also can feed in straight uh, point array. So feed this here into geometry. So for the query position, we use a null object. Um, this is just for testing. So place the null object here, then go on the up and use the position here of the null object as a query position. Then uh, activate time dependent. So um, now we like to see what's coming out here of this output. Um, an easy way to do this is use a text node and then feed it into the text spline here. And then the text spline to the output. Now we have a, a huge spline that shows us the output here. 
And now when we play and move the null around, we see it switches the number and that is the point index of the closest point. So and when we now go to the closest point object and maybe up the neighbors to two and you see we have now two points three and so on and of course with the with the distance uh, you can when you go down to zero you see you don't find the point when you go up it's a, it's a finds one yeah i think you get the idea so let's build the rest of the setup first delete the null object then the text object and now we need a new query position. So this uh, is actually all the points. So we have to compare every point with uh, with every point. So first you have to build a range to iterate over the points. Type in range. So maybe hide this, you have more space. Then the start will be zero, that's okay. And the end will be the, the size of the array. So we use a note called get count for this. Feed the array in here and the count in here. And now we have a range from zero to the size of the array. So next is to get every single point. So you can do this with a get element object and feed in the array and the index is our range and then the, every point uh, is coming out here from this output and we feed this into the query position so that's basically the, the important part so now for every point we have an array with the nearest points based on the distance and on the maximum neighbors. And now we have a small problem because the first um, point in the array will be its itself. So because the distance there is zero, so but we don't want the connection between uh, itself. So we have to delete the first position of the array um we can do this with a uh, erase node erase elements and feed in the new the created array then index zero yeah it's the first one because this one is the closest it's it's the uh, distance is zero so it is the first element in the array and the count is one we just want to delete one so now this is deleted from the array so next we like to build our final array with the positions inside to build our plexus object so first um, we need the position um, of this array because these are just the, the index um, numbers so we use another get element for this so feed in the position array uh, then here the, this into the index and it generates automatically iterate collection so it iterates over all the indexes inside here and now we have here here is our um, main point and these are the closest points to this point so we have to collect them in an array so we use a build knob for this then we like to collect vectors, position vectors, then remove two because we just need two. So feed in the main point and then the closest point here. Uh, this represents kind of one connection between two points. So then our final array. So a new one with a build node so we build the final array with all the vectors inside remove all of those here then 
use an append node to append those two vectors inside the final array. So this is our array and the value will be this one and it generates also an iterate collect. So it take, takes those two positions and feeds it into the uh, into our final array. Um, as a next step, we need a condition because let me explain and I zoom in when we have those two points here maybe and they are close enough so they build a connection so we just want a connection from here to here and not from here back so we don't want like doubled splines so we can do this with a compare node pair and now we have to check is the index of the main of the main point we can use the range here for this that's that is also the index of the points is the index is it less than the index in our um, closest points here so let's feed this in here so and now we have here a zero or a one if this is true or not and we can use this in the append node here we can replace the count so count and that means if the index is higher as the index of the closest point then it don't append the vectors so we just have one connection not the other way around so yeah that's it for the part of the array and now we have to build our spline we use an assembly spline for this feed our final points inside the assembly spline and then our geometry into here and now you can see we have all the splines um, of course they are busy at the moment we want linear splines and now the problem is we have um, too much connections um, because it connects all the points in here but we like to split um, the connection with the segment input here so um, let's build the segment first get the count here then the count we divide by two use a divide now um, data type is integer divided by two and now we have to build the segment array so we um, use a fill array for this then the data type is also integers the fill value is 2 and then the length of the array is here our result length then the, put the array into the segment and voila that's it so let's play it um, if the animation doesn't update um, maybe check the classic object the matrix object and if time dependent is on so it updates when you play and now for the end some uh, um, you have to make some parameters so that's pretty easy um, first we like to have the matrix object as a parameter so click here and drag it here and then say add a new input and of course we like to have here the maximum distance and the uh, maximum neighbors so show all inputs maximum distance and the maximum neighbors 
and now go to the spline primitive group and you see here we have now the parameters uh, now you can up the position or maybe the neighbors the position make more points maybe 20 by 20 by 20 then maybe some more And yeah, for an update, always go a frame forward and a frame back. So yeah, that's it. If you have uh, some questions, of course, um, uh, leave it in the comments and you can download the scene file uh, in the description. Bye bye.